Hello, good morning, and welcome to another out of spec motoring road trip. We are driving from here in Fort Collins, Colorado, all the way to North Carolina and then on to South Carolina. I'm not sure exactly where we're going. Alyssa, where's the final destination? Um, it's pretty much over near Charleston, South Carolina. So all the way to the coast, pretty much, we're right. heading to uh, with the Rivian R1T. And I'll walk you through why we're choosing to take the Rivian, what the plan is, why we're going. And of course, you'll join us for probably a two-parter, but we'll see if it's a one-parter road trip. It's going to be a hot weather, crazy hot weather, well over 100 degrees in certain areas, I'm sure. Road trip with the Rivian, with a dog, should be a lot of fun. And uh, it'll be over a high travel weekend as well. So it could be worst case scenario for EV road tripping but I'm really looking forward to it. I've been wanting to get back on the road, go on another EV road trip. Rivian has access to Tesla superchargers, so I'm sure we'll be using quite a few of those along the journey as well. So let's have some fun. Alyssa, we are about to head out on a road trip with Walter, the big Newfoundland dog in the Rivian R1T. Uh, this is our generation one quad motor. It's one of the launch edition trucks, and it's just been wrapped by my friend G at Test Bros. I don't know if I've actually had the truck on this channel since we've done the wrapping. Maybe I have, but it looks awesome. Custom printed wrap. And so check out Riv Bros and Test Bros if you want to have accessories for your Rivians or Tesla. G is a good friend of mine. We've worked together since literally day one. It's been wonderful. So the road trip, why are we taking the Rivian and not the smart car or the VinFast or the e-tron, which I kind of wanted to take the e-tron actually. Uh, but Alyssa chose the Cybertruck actually to go on this trip and it cannot go because it's actually going into Tesla service. Uh, well, no, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing, but I'm, I'm upset that we can't take it. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but, um, it's getting its front motor replaced this week. And so that has to happen here in Colorado. Otherwise we would have taken it because not only are we road tripping to Colorado, we're actually leaving a vehicle out there for about a month's period of time before Alyssa will drive it back. Walter, our dog has a bunch of stuff going on out there. I don't he has know. competitions. He is a competitor. Okay. And so we got to drive him all the way out to the East Coast for this, apparently. But I'm up for a road trip, so it should be fun. Why did you, Alyssa, want to take the Cybertruck instead of the Rivian? I'll just show you guys why, honestly. Um, so the Rivian is, it's a great car, but just looking at how high Walter and all the dogs have to get up. I mean, this is like to my hip and I'm like almost six feet tall. So that's a really high ingress and egress. Versus the Cybertruck is literally just, just like a normal car because the seats fold up or fold back, I guess. And so it's really easy for the dogs to get in and out of. Yeah, because they can sit on and stand on the floor rather than on top of the seat. Right. And, and that to me is a huge highlight, especially, I mean, this road trip's revolved around him. So having to get him in and out, I just, I don't like that too much. Uh, it's just hard on his joints, on all of their joints, really. So... That would have been the preferred car also supercharging network which we have with this but we're still gonna have to like block stalls and stuff and i don't i don't like that yeah so the port's not in the native location for rivian and also not every supercharger is open to the rivian right. so we will probably have to hit some ccs and we'll play around with it we'll do whatever makes sense we're in no huge rush we're just going on a typical weekend road trip yeah. not trying to break any cannonball records here or anything and um Alyssa, one thing i thought you were going to say why you want to take the cybertruck was for the air conditioning yeah, the Cybertruck is better with air conditioning, uh, but I wouldn't say the Rivian's terrible with it. Uh, just you're able to really blast the the rear vents and do all that stuff and keep it like separate climates, so he can be at low 60 degrees and we can be at 68 and not be freezing. But um, we bring our jackets. Kyle always wears a hoodie, so we'll we'll be fine. Those are just just little nitpicks, but overall, like. I brought both of these trucks to a dog event and just filling them up with all the stuff that's needed. And this truck is much better in terms because I have Walter's big high blow dryer. This doesn't output as much power as this one does. So you mean in terms of the inverter? Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, I do prefer this one for the long run, but it's special and needs to go in for service. So yeah. this one was in for service for a whole month. So we just got this back, thankfully. This just got back from a month-long service where they yeah. dialed it in for us. The Cybertruck, they're doing engineering research on the motor. 
and we've got it not completely full, but it's just perfect with the tonneau for arrow that I can get it right there with the uh, cooler on its side. Yeah, uh, standing up, it, it wouldn't close, but on its side, it, it did. So that's got like, I don't know, 50, 50 to 60 pounds of meat in there. So that'll be nice. Uh, hopefully it will stay. I don't really know. I've never used it. So, um, but yeah, we're uh, gotta get the dog and then we should head out. Okay, so dog in the car, and yeah. then I'll look at the route while you're getting him loaded. So I have charged up, at least attempted to charge up to full overnight. You can see I'm just using my Tesla wall connector with a little adapter in between. And um, this is what happens. It goes slower due to warm plugs. So Rivians are suffering from a AC charging uh, temperature uh, bug issue, plague, I don't know. You can see now it's coming back up actually. So it, it really, I plugged this in at 6 p.m. last night. It's now 9 a.m. So what's that? 12, 13, 15, almost 16 hours actually later. And we're still not full. <laughs> So we are probably going to leave here at 98% state of charge, something like that, which should be fine. Uh, we are going to go, I'm not really sure what route we're going to head on, but let's just take a look here. We only want to look at high power stations. So we'll probably take 70 down to 40 and then go into North Carolina this way. I don't know. Let's see if the route planning can do it. Let's just put in Charleston, which is one of our favorite places. We love Charleston. Okay, 1,700 miles. This is about all the route planning I do. I never really look ahead. We just go. And, um, you know, we, we pretty much know every charging station in between here and there pretty well. So looking forward to seeing how this goes. Come on, baby, calculate. I'm looking forward to another Rivian road trip. Cybertruck certainly would have been better in the hot weather because of um, just the increased thermal management that Cybertruck has over this one. And uh, yeah, all good. Well, I'll let this calculate and I'll let you know what it says. There we go. Calculating is done. One thing I think we should do is let's see we've yeah we have our final arrival set to pretty much dead which is fine we'll dial that in as we get there so it looks like it wants to have a stop at electrify america and flagler which last i heard was offline so we do have to just double check that because i heard a rivian routed uh driver there and totally screwed them up so then we're going to do a colby get there at 57 miles i wish i could choose the arrival percentage then there's a Hayes Kansas Rivian network we haven't been to that one yet uh EV connect that sounds like we're not going to do that because that could be really anything EV go why no Tesla in here have I told it I don't have the adapter oh here we go hide adapter needed we have the official adapter so let's actually reroute that with the Tesla supercharger adapter this is the official Tesla to CCS um, adapter provided by Rivian for my truck. And, um, yep. So we'll be using this one at superchargers along the way. Maybe that will improve some of the route planning, but either way, one of these, this just gives you an idea of where we're heading. I'm going to probably play around in real time, figure out what we're going to do, but this is no joke of a trip. It's more than halfway across the United States. And, uh, what we're going to do is basically fly back once we uh, get over there. We haven't booked return flights. We haven't really thought too far in advance, but uh, things are happening, should be fun. And I actually have to go out to LA afterwards. So yeah, let's see if this has changed anything. Electrify America, we can pull up the route plant. Crap, I hit stop instead of going up. Oh boy, either way, let's hit the road. So I know you guys always like to see all the puffles. So you got Walter and you got an LA. And you got a boopies. You guys want to tell the fans or the viewers or whatever we might want to call them what you guys caught this morning for the first time ever, of course, as we're going on a road trip. I think Blue caught a squirrel and Walter was sitting there barking and aiding it. Not eating it, aiding, like helping it out, trying to help it. Um, as he's just such a sweet boy, but went and checked on the squirrel. He was just in shock, had a little bit of drool on him. 
and um, he's he's on his merry way. But everybody was very happy and excited about that. So Walter, are you ready to go on your trip? You're going on a big trip? Oh, good. Let's go get you packed in. These guys are staying with Danny, Nanny, Nanny Danny, and he will have fun because Danny plays with him nonstop. And that's what he's trying to do as he's being so freaking naughty. You're just, you're so cheeky. But let's get you leashed up and in the car, buddy. Hey, Daddy. Say bye bye. Say bye, Ellie. Ellie, say bye. Okay, Walter's by the door. Oh, I missed his spinning. Oh, oh, are you going to do it again? Spin around. He's telling me he likes to come down here, knock all of his leashes over, and uh, to tell me he likes to go for a WALK, but we're not going for a WALK just yet. We're going for a road trip. A road trip. Oh, let me get your leash. You're laying on it. Here we go. Here we go. All right, let's get you in the car. And here comes the man of the hour. Walter is coming up. Hey, dude. Not gonna be happy to get into the truck. It's a lot of people may not have even seen Walter since our Model Three road trip with him when we first got him over a year ago. <laughs> He's a big boy. Hey, dude. Yeah. So, I got a different platform. This is actually a hard platform, and it gives it a good extra six inches of room here too which is nicer because he's also able to get to this air vent too but he's got his fan in the back some toys and um oh. <laughs> this is how he usually lays the whole time anyways he's just likes to stare and get all that air flow right here and he's got his air flow right there <laughs> it's all about flow we should have named him flow uh, yeah if we get a girl we'll, we'll name her flow <laughs> but look at this just he's hot yeah. Oh yeah, everyone wants to see that. Yeah, that's that's Walter. Um, we're still connected to uh, the level two uh, EVSE because ABC always be charging. Uh, in terms of drive modes and settings and everything, first of all, I'm gonna swap this into uh, my profile here. So here I go, nice. And we have the newer software update, everything's up to date. We're probably gonna be running all purpose most of this drive, but I can use conserve mode, which will disconnect the rear motors and run front wheel drive if I need a little bit more range. Uh, just some stats on the truck. So far, we have 47,500 miles. This trip, round trip, we're going to hit 50,000 miles on this trip, which is a lot in two years on this one, especially considering we have a bunch of other cars that we drive and test. So yeah, should be pretty fun. And uh, we'll reset trip A and see how that goes so trip a is reset although these didn't there they go a little lag time so quad motor gen 1 22 inch wheels we do have different tires than oe a little bit more of an aggressive tire but that's okay let's uh we're at 98 percent let's hit the road sound good sounds great Alyssa is unplugging us now 98 percent state of charge there we go and uh, we have our normal road tripping kit. We have a NACS or J3400, technically AC charging to J1772. Uh, so we have that and we have our Tesla supercharger adapter. I'm not sure what our route plan is gonna be, but it should be interesting. We'll probably stay overnight, who knows where. It's 9.30 in the morning, we're heading out. I just finished up some podcasting. Walter's ready to roll. Just in terms of air conditioning, we can go vehicle on. We've got the back vents on, we've got the front vents on, and we're ready to roll. Charged up to indicated 300 miles. At some, Rivian has a non-linear discharge curve, and so that 300 miles is, um, you can't really trust it up top. You can't use that as a way to gauge degradation, really. Um, but what is pretty accurate, I would say, at least in my other experiences, has been this arrival state of charge. So it says 63 miles at Flagler. That could be interesting. Um, there's probably some other chargers that we could look at in the area. Perhaps, I don't know, that one. We'll be able to, we'll push it to the farthest away charger we can at least. So anyway, let's hit the road. All right, so off we go. Oh, not quite yet. We gotta put the Cybertruck in the driveway. You gotta put the Cybertruck in the driveway. And off we go. All the cars are there. 
trash is getting put away, picked up. Everything's charged between 30 and 50%, so we're good. You good, bud? I don't know what he's charged up to. He's fully charged. He's amped, so I gave him a little CBD to help calm down everything and have a better car ride. Sounds like it. Yeah, he just chokes himself when he leans on this. It's just... <laughs> Just how it is, and it's it's hot in here, so yep. I agree with him. We'll crank the AC, but we're going to hit the road. We've got at least a couple hours or more of driving. Um, I would think we can make it more than 176 miles till our first charging stop. Again, we're at 98% state of charge, but um, yeah, what I'm going to do in terms of drive mode is we're just going to run all purpose. We will uh, just keep everything on normally, nothing crazy. I like to keep all four motors engaged for tire wear, but also just having the power available. Uh, in this one, when you disconnect the rear axle, you're limited just to uh, front wheel drive and half the power, which isn't great. So yeah, we'll hit the road and have a nice journey. We'll see how far we can make it before we have to charge. We are just making a quick pit stop over to Starbucks, of course, to go and get um, a drink and a little breakfast for the road before we make a really big trip, uh, a couple hours. So uh, get my green tea and Kyle's new order. Yeah, no more pink drink. But also um, what's interesting is we should go inside. Well, thankfully this car is dog mode. That was another reason we took it over the e-tron. Right. So nice to have dog mode. And Alyssa, uh, the weird thing is there's not many superchargers open on this stretch. Oh, great. Because what would have been perfect is if Lyman was open, but it's not. So it's a V2 and V3 and they don't really install them or they haven't really opened up any stations that are shared V2 and V3, I think to avoid confusion. But rather than avoiding confusion, it actually is just making it a bit difficult. So we're just, we're stuck in between two cars backing up here. So we'll just give it a second. And then, uh, yeah, is what it is. But we'll get um, get some Starbucks. And um, I'm not really sure what else to say other than truck's driving great. My half shafts are not ticking, but I'm sure it'll come back. It'll be back. To enter dog mode, you just click here. You go paw, turn on, and then it goes to such a warm temperature. So. I really wish Rivian would make it so you could get colder in dog mode because this isn't just a normal dog. This is a noof. It is a noof poof. Yep. Guys, we have a interesting situation leaving Denver. And uh, the main problem is the Rivian was gonna navigate us to this station here, which is an Electrify America I-70 diner, which they claim has an A rating. The problem is that station is currently offline. It's a good thing I checked the Electrify America app. Uh, I believe they're upgrading the stations, but there's also been some software buggy stuff going on with EA recently where you know, you always want to check before you go there. What's interesting is the Rivian rates this station in A, but if you go on plug share, it has a 4.1 rating, which is really bad. And that's notoriously one of the worst stations. So I always check, you know, everything before I go to this one. So that leaves us not many options to charge in the area. Um, you know, of course, we're still at 54%. We have a long way to go, but we're about to go into Kansas and there's not much out here. So. The, the first and safest option would actually be to charge here at this charge point station, which we'd get there with roughly 30% state of charge, which we could totally do. EA is closed and not working. And then this is the one we probably could make it to. This is the one I'm navigating to right now. It's 134 miles away. We have 54%, so I almost have no doubt in my mind we can make that. The Rivian's conservative, it shows we can't make it. What it doesn't tell me is how much we can't make it by. A nice thing that Tesla does 
and Porsche does and others is they say, okay, you'll make it at negative 4%. And then I know I just have 4% I need to make up by dropping speed in order to get there. What the Rivian used to do was actually show you where you would run out, but all of that is gone. And I don't know why, but I, it really needs to tell me how many percent off I am. If I go into the ChargePoint app here, that station that we're stretching to has an out of service charger, an out of service charger, one available and one unknown. So we're basically gonna arrive dead if we stretch it there to at least one charger that works. Now, thankfully it has a 10 out of 10 plug share and A rating in here. If we can stretch it there, I think we should. But uh, if any other cars are going there, there's only one station working and with EA down, I think a lot of cars are gonna go there. Uh, could be interesting. Either way, it just feels very clunky leaving this place. We go there. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we do go here, do a quick top up, enough to stretch it to whatever this is here, Electrify American Colby. So we'll play around with it, but basically there's no good station we can leave from, unfortunately, or, or make it to from the house. So this is always a problem. It's why Lyman Supercharger is usually our first stop, which is right around here somewhere. And that's a great spot. Wish they would open it up to non-Tesla because that would make life so much easier. Uh, you know, if they just put a magic dot there as an example or opened it up to the NAX approved cars. But it's a little bit, uh, you know, not smooth. I, I always come back to, okay, what if my mom drove, my mom drives a Model Y. What would my mom do if she drove a CCS car? Well, she would listen to it and she would go to EA and then she would end up in a broken station. And that's not a good situation. As long as Walter has air conditioning, he doesn't care. Well, it seems that we're stopping off early to charge up to try and surpass that charger so we don't have to worry about it. Yeah, there's just so much headwind um, that we're getting 1.3 miles per kilowatt hour. <laughs> now, of course, we're not running the standard tire. We have an all-terrain tire, which is not really helping with efficiency at all. And we also, oh my gosh, it's busy here. There's a Rivian, there's a Polestar, there's a Bolt, there's another Rivian. So I think we are gonna have to wait to charge. No. Uh, infrastructure in this part of the country is rough. There's a Maki over there, but I don't think they're waiting. So I think this guy's trying to get his Rivian to start charging. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to wait for, I hope that one to open up because that one, so what's weird is these two on the right are CPE, um, Charge Point Express uh, 120 kilowatts shared. So they're gonna get each 60 kilowatts each. That's a 200 kilowatt one right over there if you look in front of Alyssa. Sorry. That one's a 200 uh, kilowatt station that will be split to 100 each. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on with this bolt right now. <laughs> they have so, a Papagian chair on the top. I don't even think it's it's actually, is it even, how do they tie that oh, down? Oh, and this R1S is uh, leaving. Yay. Yeah, okay, cool, how about that? Rivians help Rivians. Yeah, awesome. So, and, uh, so yeah, well, Charge there. <laughs> Perfect. So, so we got the faster unit, even though we're shared and we're able to get right in on this. I'm going to help that guy get his Rivian charging too. And I'm going to go to the bathroom and I'm going to grab some ice. And I got to hit dog mode. We're going to put him in dog mode. We're going to keep him in here because it's, he hot it's hot out. He just doesn't need to go out. He's fine. He sleeps in the house all day long, don't you? You don't need to go out every single stop. You just need a nap. All right, well, I've tapped to activate. We've plugged in and let's see if we get charging. So, um, yeah, been to the station before a couple times. Looks like the other guy got charging. We are juicing and we really don't want to spend much time here. We just want to arrive at the next station dead, but with so much wind, I'm trying to block the wind on the camera here. It's very strong headwind. You can see that little windmill over there is ripping. Um, yeah, so much wind here. We do want to overcharge a bit just because don't want to have any issues. So we're getting 116 kilowatts, which again, isn't great, but um, we're, because we're sharing with a Volt, we're actually able to get some more power than if it was just a normal 100-100 split. So that's good. 
All right, we are getting some snacks, Alyssa. Waters and snacks, hell yeah. Uh, the dude with the red Rivian couldn't get his truck going, so we activated the charge for him. I don't know why, maybe he didn't have a charge point account set up, but. Said he did. Said he did, I don't know, but we started it for him. So he's all juicing. I told him once we leave, go and take our unit though, cause he'll get more power. Walter, what's up, dude? <laughs> We're just chatting with the uh, super cool Rivian owner over here who uh, is toes with his truck, super nice guy. And uh, yeah, just, just didn't know the charge point thing, I guess. But uh, we're still sitting at 117, 118 kilowatts while Alyssa gets the bags packed up. Ugh. There's an I-4 waiting right over here to charge. So we have a full station. Hello, back up, dude. I don't need your drool. We have to go. So I want to skip this, skip this, and head to here, which would be the first available charger we could do, Colby. But I don't know how many miles that is. So... We have to charge here to 66%, which isn't too bad. So that if we charge to 66%, we'd get there with two miles, but I don't think this is factoring the headwind. So I think we might need to charge to 80% here to do 143 miles. So if we just look at our trip, we did 156 miles and we used, and again, only the second half of that had headwind. We left at 98%, 97%, and we got here at 20 something. So I really think we do need like an 80% charge to push against the headwind to uh, do this stretch. I mean, we can't stop here. This station is full right now. Um, and there's a line here because the EA station is down. So there's just not enough infrastructure for the cars. And I think we want to skip that. We'll just charge up here while we can. And that'll be the plan. Alyssa, we have been charging for, feels like way too long. And we are charged up to 74%. And the Bolt is still here. The Red Rivian is here. There's an Ionic here. And the I-4 went to go get snacks. snacks. And then they got stuck in line behind the Ionic. Why would they do that? I don't know. They should have just waited. But anyway, uh, it shows a 15 mile arrival now, which is perfect. We've just tapered off of 100 kilowatts, really bad charge, but that's what happens when you have to share power. And that's why I like dedicated charging power or at least site level power distribution. Uh, but here again, we, we'd be maxing out the site. So it shows a 15 mile arrival here. We cannot go to the Flagler location, which is there. This one is full right now, same situation as here on the other side of this stretch. And then that one is EA. I think with the big headwind that we have, this might be cutting it a little bit too close. So I think we charge an extra 5% buffer, charge to 80, and then we'll hit the road. Wow, plane is so safe these days. Well, we have to run air conditioning, it's hot. And an extra few minutes isn't gonna kill anyone. We are charged up to 80% and Red Rivian's leaving and the station's freeing up. So ready to roll. Shows 31 uh, per miles, which is about 10%. I hate how it doesn't show percent. No one thinks in miles because you can't go 30 miles at 10% in this car, in this configuration. Doesn't matter. Either way, let's rock and roll. Off we go. So we were here for 47 minutes, a really deep charge, but that's what the wind does to you. 85 kilowatt hours delivered, really slow charge because we were sharing. But uh, hey, that is life out here in the plains. Can't wait till we get more infrastructure. Let's roll. Welcome to Colby, Kansas. That was the creepiest sign ever. Oh, didn't see it. Um, I can see it now. We are at 3% state of charge. So I would say we charged perfectly. Yeah. Because below 3%, it's hard to maintain highway speed. So we maintained 85 the whole way here. Uh, because I'm actually on a different tire than stock, our 
Oh, see, that's the supercharger I wish was open, but it's a version two. I love that supercharger. It's yeah. Got the Starbucks, dog park, everything we got. Yeah, Walter's up. already, he's been there before. But now we have to go a mile this way to the EA station. Yeah. Um, and hopefully it's open and working well. This but, is why um, I wanted to take the this, this Cybertruck. Yeah, so anyway, we have uh, had very poor efficiency, which is why we overcharged a bit, and which allowed us the opportunity to uh, basically drive you know, full speed over here, 1.45 miles per kilowatt hour over that stretch. I mean, this is really bad efficiency. Holy smokes. Um, anyway, we are just about to pop over to the EA station, which is at the Walmart here. We've been here many times together. There are two 350 kilowatt stations. Apparently every station is up and running. Some cables are broken, so but there's at least one cable on every uh, dispenser that works. So time will tell, and uh, we're only about one minute away. So see you over at the station, we'll plug it in. The car has been pre, the truck has been preconditioning since we left the previous charger. So for, I don't know, hour, two hours? Yeah. It just sits there running preconditioning and the battery temperature Wow, it's at 104, it's hot. So we're probably gonna have thermally limited uh, charging performance here. But again, that's the Rivian thing. It's 100 degrees outside. Rivian's thermal management, especially on Gen 1, sucks. Uh, I brought my truck in for service recently though and they refreshed the air conditioning. So that was good, they recharged the AC. So it'll suck a little less, but not by much. Yeah, and we have a fully open station. How about this, Alyssa? Yeah. Oh, when I just checked the app, it said it was busy. So good stuff. Let's uh, plug into the 350 kilowatt, which would be number two or four. So we'll go all the way on the end to so this 350. And get it juicing. Okay, it says four or four chargers available. We're on charger four. Boom, pass plus, swipe. I'll go plug in. Hurry up. <laughs> And there it goes, getting the plug. Oh wow, the fans went down a lot. They're about to crank right back up though. Wait, how many times has this truck been running the single digits? It must be a thousand. A lot, <laughs> yeah. This battery has been, this, I mean, it's not the best road tripping vehicle at all. And no. especially because we put the all-terrains on and the rack on the back, like it doesn't help. No. And, uh, you know, I'm running running four motors engaged. I have no need to use conserve yet. And uh, anyway, starting the charge. Let's hope it works out well. 42 cents a kilowatt hour. Now, we have a couple options uh, from here. Close your door, please. Sure. We're conserving all AC in here. Yeah, that's right. Okay, we are charging. So we have a Tesla supercharger here that we could use. It's not very far away. If, just if we wanted to go do the Tesla thing. It's only 20 minutes down the road. So it says if we charge here, actually it doesn't tell me how much we would need to charge here. That never does. Yeah, don't know. But anyway, we could blast over there if we wanted to, because the next charger after that would be the Rand station in Hayes. Let's see how many miles that is. Let's see. That is 106 miles. So I think we skip Tesla. We just go to the Rivian station. Yep. Sound good? If I just go over here, show everyone the trick, we can look at our charging stats. So if I come here to service mode, one, two, three, four, five, swipe up, go to ride, one, two, three, four, five, three, three, seven, four, eight. We can get all the nerd data on the truck. So we'll let it load up all the ECUs, but we're already up to 191 kilowatts. We should get a really good initial charge here. Hopefully there's no thermal limiting. And uh, the, the station said we plugged in at 2%, but the Rivian showed uh, 3%. Alyssa's got a cold, by the way, if you hear her coughing in the back. I'm trying so hard to not be loud. Yeah, it's all good. All good. Is my screen chipping here, Alyssa? Oh, no. Drool. Drool. Walter Drool. Okay, here we go. We've got some faults on some modules. That's not good. Uh, high voltage load. So we have 500 amps available from the charger. We're getting 500 amps, which is 197 kilowatts at the moment. And the maximum temperature is 40 C. The Rivian will start to limit around 50 to 55 degrees Celsius. So we have some room until that happens. 
We've got the AC on full blast in here. We're getting 200 kilowatts. Honestly, I think the large packs charge better than the max packs. Because Alyssa and I just did an R1S max pack road trip. Yeah, we did. That was not good. Nope. Nope, it was not. But, um, and there's supposedly no improvements with the new generation, so. Yeah. I don't get, I mean, out of all things, I feel like you'd want to make road tripping easier. That's just me. But. They focused on some other things like putting on really crappy doors. <laughs> Alyssa doesn't like the new I'm doors. I'm so offended by them. And the new Rivian. I'm so offended. But they have improved the air conditioning and thermal management, they claim. They claim. And Walter is seemingly doing pretty well. Did you fart? Nope. Walter farted. God, Walter. Did you chew, you did you poop poop this morning? Or did you, you caught a squirrel this morning. That's what you did. Just taking Walter out on a little walk after his Rooney toot toot. He's see if he's got anything to do other than peeing on everything like a young teenage boy does. She's gonna pee on this tree. He really has quite the angle there. I mean that's just incredible. Look at that. I just you're you're incredible, buddy, aren't you? Wow, there, yep, do it for the viewers. A nice, good, drooly shake. Whoa. So we'll just play around until he gets too hot and we'll put him back in. So we are ripping along, charging just great. 208 kilowatts going into the battery. We've got, I don't know, 211 being delivered from the charger, looks like. And damn, 10 minutes, 31 kilowatt hours. I like it. That's what we like to see temperatures haven't been rising too much it hasn't been too bad so um, although I say that just as we taper so now we're down to 90 kilowatts and it's not a problem of the truck it's a problem of the charger so we just had a charger limit us to 90 kilowatts worst case I can always unplug and plug in with another handle if it doesn't recover and this is probably just a case of handle temperatures let's get a feeling for it this is where the wet rag trick actually does help for CCS, but I don't necessarily recommend doing it. And uh, I don't know, it's pretty hot down here, but not, not so bad around here. And um, yeah, oh, we're up to 132 kilowatts. So things are happening, but definitely hot weather charging. And <laughs> yeah, you can see it says limited by charging station, but it's opening up 378 kilowatts now, or 378 amps, excuse me. So yeah, let's just see what happens. Worst case, we switch stalls, but for now we'll keep it rolling. The lady in the uh, Kona is using the 350 kilowatt station. Uh, and we're up to almost 500 amps again, good. But why do we have the surge? Almost at full power, close enough, not worth switching for this now. So I would say the, the thermals of the truck is doing better than I expected. Keeping the air conditioning maxed out in theory shouldn't work, but it seems to be doing well. Uh, we're up to 52 degrees Celsius, so the truck is going to limit charging power at some point here soon if we maintain temperature rise. But you can see we're surging on the charger. And uh, these, are the, uh, these are the old Signets here. So it's a little Signet surge action going on. You can see now we're down to uh, 92 kilowatts being delivered. But what's weird is the charger says 432. So we may have just t tapered due to truck temperature there. So so the my theory is like, okay, if the, even if the charger limits us a bit, that just means it's more time that we can spend at, uh, you know, at the charger before the battery overheats in the truck. So at, at some point, both things are going to get hot. We know this enough. Now the charger is limiting us, it claims, but it's surging up and down. Whatever. I'm not going to look at it too closely on this trip. We're just chilling. We've been here 15 minutes. Superchargers are going to give us a handle issue. EA is giving us a thermal issue as well right there. 450 amps down from 500. The truck's got a battery thermal issue. So we just will have thermal issues on this trip on a hot weather road trip with a Rivian. There's no way around it. So anyway, all part of the fun. Don't know where Alyssa and Walter have gone, but I've kept the air conditioning on maximum here. I should close the door back up. Charging is increased again. Again, the surging continues. We're up to uh, now 468 available. And we're at 190 kilowatts. Oh, well, all good. 
we'll just let it be, let it do what it wants to do. Well, now we are limiting due to truck temperature. So you can see we're at 54 degrees Celsius, only doing 286 amps into the battery pack. The charger uh, can do a lot more than that. Actually, the way EA uh, works on a lot of their stations is they won't just sit at 500 amps. Once you start pulling a lot less than your maximum, it will actually display a lower maximum current. It's a weird thing, I think, to make it actually more compatible with different EVs, but the, the charger actually, if we were to come up close to asking for 360 amps, probably would unlock back up to 430 to 500 uh, as needed. But right now we're at the maximum cell temperature Rivian allows, 54.4, and that is why we are derating so hard, and you can see the message for the charger limited is there. So even if we were to switch cables, previously and get the maximum speed from the charger, we would have just overheated the battery even earlier. Uh, Alyssa's gonna run into the store, it sounds like, just for a few minutes, and we need to charge up here another 15% or so, up to 55 to 60% state of charge, so sound good? Sounds good. Welcome to hot weather Rivian life. We had a good charging session up until now, and now we are maxed out, and the air conditioning cooling inside the vehicle Oh yeah, it's getting toasty in here, but it's still cooling. So yes, all good, but we have a drooly, drooly noof. Oh, nasty, nasty, nasty. Colton, you gotta clean this truck when we come back. We are off to the next station. Uh, we are still getting pretty slow charging speeds. That's what happens when the battery gets hot. It shows a six mile arrival, but it's only 106 miles away and we're charged up to 60%. We should be able to make that no problem. Uh, we just got everything settled. So that's as long as Walter and Alyssa needed anyway. That was 38 minutes, Alyssa. Long stat. But, I took. Yeah. Just then? Yeah. Inside? Uh, with the P and going inside, yeah. So I guess that's fine. And we're ready to roll. You good to go? Okay, let's do it. And the uh, Kona left and the uh, Ionic took the 350. So all good. So we dumped in 90 kilowatt hours in 39 minutes. Cost me $41. Not amazing, it's really toasty out here. But uh, yeah, let's go. Time to start this thing up. Battery's gotta be red hot right now. Yeah, literally red hot. <laughs> so, all right, let's go cool this thing down, get on the highway and head to the next stop. And we're just now exiting to the RAND network in Hayes, Kansas. We are hungry and this dog still needs to go to the bathroom, but he has a weird fear or weird thing about going to the bathroom in public. Our viewers don't need to know about Walter's bathroom habits. Well. <laughs> Here we are exiting at the Hayes. Uh, 1.5 miles per kilowatt hour. This run, I did the opposite of the first run, Alyssa, where I ran conserve and slammed us all the way down. Oh. And we still got terrible efficiency. Uh, this is all new, by the way, this uh, new roundabout they just put this in. Wow. Very nice, have nice. to say. Nice. Uh, just going to raise us up for a second as well, because it really doesn't drive that well. So I'm gonna go all purpose. It'll connect the rear motors back up, raise the suspension and we have plenty of juice, 5% arrival. Now we've been here many times. There's a version two Tesla supercharger. There's the Electrify America station. And I think actually this looks like it's near Applebee's, which is where the supercharger is right over here. So we'll have to see what we can do, but I definitely want to get some food. So what are you feeling, Alyssa? Are you okay with Applebee's if it's there? I don't know, last time I've been to an Applebee's. Okay. I don't know what God. this place is doing, except just cutting right through the intersection. Woo. Seems crazy. But, uh, you know, people in Kansas haven't quite figured out the roundabout yet. So that should be the supercharger there. And it is. The old version 2. And this one's at an old Chicago pizzeria. Ah, amazing. Yeah. How about that? 
haven't been to this station yet. I think it's been installed for a little while now, but it's my first time hitting the Rand. Now, what's cool about this is there's a trailer pull through there, and you could, in theory, if you had a long trailer, pull right up to 1B here as well. Essentially, um, this is a six stall. Yep. But what's cool is Rivian's installed it with only paired of two. So, for example, there's an R1S staying at that Avid hotel. But what's what's nice about this station is most of them are, if there were six stations, there would only be two charging cabinets, which means a single Rivian's there gets full power, two Rivian's there you have to share power at 150 kilowatts, and then if a third Rivian goes on your cabinet, you're down to 100. Here, it's 300 single 150 split, and 150, 150 is totally fine for a Rivian because of thermals. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is plug us in, get this thing juicing, keep the air conditioning running maxed out for Walter, we'll get food, all should be good. Uh, 5% arrival, perfect. So welcome to a new charging site for me. I'm excited about this, really like the RAN chargers. I just didn't like how they did A, B, and C, but here it's just A and B. Uh, so up to, oh, so you get 40 cents a minute. They can't build by kilowatt hour here. So it's 40 cents a minute if you're pulling more than 160 kilowatts and 29 cents per minute if you're under 160 kilowatts. Okay, in we go. Plug and charge, activating. So they have a 2.5 megawatt transformer, big boy, holy smokes. So that's 2,500 kVA, which means they could probably do some upgrades here. So then they have the Lincoln switch gear feeding the three Rivian cabinets, which these are, uh, you know, there's cabinets one, two, and three. Dang, this is really nicely done. And there's room for expansion. So that's why they have the uh, bigger transformer in here. And there's an R1S, maybe a viewer talking to Alyssa. And uh, yeah, so there we are. Sick install. Walter, come. And we are charging. Let's take a look at the speeds. Yeah, 190 kilowatts. Pretty much full rip on this thing at the moment. Again, as we gain state of charge, we'll gain pack voltage and we'll gain charging speed. So uh, the one annoying thing is I don't think we can put it into dog mode at the moment because we don't have enough range. Yep, range is too low. And so that could be a reason why you may want to select conserve before charging. I was thinking about that because then the truck actually gives you a more optimistic range estimate and it does it based off of miles and not percent. So you could get it into dog mode sooner. However, with Walter, what we actually tend to do is take it out of dog mode and put it in show and tell because show and tell actually lets us run air conditioning completely maxed out in low. And so I think that might be what we end up doing here because it's very hot outside. Another nice thing I think you guys will like is when you're using a Rivian network charger or a Tesla supercharger, when you activate with plug and charge, it will actually tell you the charging cost right there. So we're at 69 cents at the moment and Walter is doing his thing. Well, having a dog on a road trip, probably similar to kids, they take a lot of time. So even though the Rivian's a slow charging vehicle, it really doesn't matter too much because this dude's got to eat his dinner. So Alyssa's preparing his dinner in the back of the truck. We've got some water for him. Nice little hangout spot right off the highway. Things are going well. We're still charging. Ah, we just tapered pretty hard there. 150 kilowatts or so at 32%. But uh, wow, so cheap when you get to buy, you know bill by the minute. <laughs> so much cheaper than uh, paying per kilowatt hour. So we have tapered down pretty slow, and I think the reason is the truck is overheating, uh, would be my guess. Let me take a look. If I come here, service. Uh, we don't want show and tell limit climate performance. We'll turn all that off at the moment. Go over here, do, do, do. Nice thing is dog mode overrode that. And yep, we're at 54 degrees Celsius. So even though we preconditioned for like two hours or an hour and a half driving over here. Yeah, we're still a very limited charging performance. So 
that's okay though. Walter's gonna eat, Alyssa and I are gonna get food. We're gonna full charge, or do a, as deep of a charge as we need. We're not in a rush. Just gonna let this thing sit here and melt at 55 degrees Celsius. It's really not that hot, but it's pretty toasty. And the one thing is the, the reason, just in case you're curious, why Rivians have such poor thermal management is the battery's a double stacker. So there's cells on the bottom and the top. And then in the middle of those two cells, basically touching the bottom of the top cell and the bottom of the bottom cell, some are installed upside down, they are, uh, there's essentially a cooling plate. And that single cooling plate can only cool the bottom bit of that cell. So A, there's a cooling power component, but also a gradient temperature component. And one thing that's interesting is occasionally after multiple charging stops, we may even see it on this trip, the uh, cooling package may cool the bottom of those cells enough but if it runs harder and harder and it gets really hot outside and the pavement's really hot, uh, it can't actually cool the hottest part of the cell, which means you will actually derate even if the average battery pack temperature is within a window that can accept high power charging. Uh, it is all about where the hot spots are in the battery pack. And with a single plate cooling, you can develop hot spots on the tops of the cells, which would be the bottom and the top uh, you know, basically the floor pan and underneath the car, the truck. And, but keep in mind, it's the bottom of the cells that typically get hot in this configuration, which is why they have that central cooling plate. So it does take multiple charges in extreme conditions to get it to have that gradient D rate. But there's a lot of complicated math when it comes to thermal management on electric vehicles, a lot of real engineering that happens here. Unfortunately, Rivian just did not take it too seriously, and it has one of the weakest thermal packages on any new vehicle that I've tested. So we're wanting to leave Walter in the car while we go grab a bite to eat. And dog mode doesn't get cold enough or blow enough fan. When it goes, when you hit dog mode, it should just go maximum fan on every vent and maybe not full cold, but like 68 is too much. 64, 65 indicated would be pretty good um, because with, with a dog, it's, it's also about a lot of airflow, especially one this big. So the trick is to put the truck into show and tell mode, which I've just done. Uh, but one thing we want, of course, is to be able to monitor the temperature while we're gone. And we can do that here. Now it says 63 degrees. It's like, 73 degrees it's yeah. not accurate uh, but at least when it's on low it will run everything full send full rip and we'll be able to monitor the temperature from here if for whatever reason it stops working the charging speeds it will compensate for our air conditioning by uh, pulling from the charger so we're still getting everything the battery can handle from a thermal perspective and pulling the extra to the cooling systems so we probably have 110 kilowatts going to the battery or so right now uh, anyway, it's going to be an hour till we're at 100%. We have plenty of time, and so we're not in a rush. Let's go get some food. We'll monitor the temperature here, and uh, at least Walter's got full fan, full everything on full send is how we have it set right now, all the vents on. You good, bro? All right, Alyssa. We got some tenders. Tenders and broccoli. Yep, and I got some pizza. And you checked on Walter and all is good? All is good, but I am looking into some temperature monitors to keep in the car, just in case, and it's just a backup of backup. I think I got really spooked when we brought our uh, Tesla into service and the temperature just shut off and I got no warning because of it. And my, luckily my friend was in the car during it, but after that, I don't really trust any systems, so I'd rather have a backup to the backup to the backup, just in case. So I'll let you guys know when I figure out what I um, want to work with and what I want to do. So, but I don't know yet. We are back and the car stayed cold, right Alyssa? Yeah, it stayed cold. Yeah, nice. Awesome. So um, I guess uh, we are definitely good to go. Let's just take a look at our next stop. Should be not too far from here. Hey, Walter boy. So I don't know see how far we can stretch it can we make it over here that's salina oh would be good to make it to that abilene one can we do it oh yeah easily abilene can we go farther ev connect not sure i'm liking that 350 kilowatts though and then topeka i don't know i feel like we just blast to this tesla one We'll get on the road. We'll go to the farthest one we can. <laughs> Thanks, Walter. But we're certainly not gonna sit here at 43 kilowatts. So, all right, I'll unplug here in a second. Cool Compass Yellow R1S, by the way. That's awesome. 
These guys are awesome. Some viewers and they have this little swing out rigid uh, spare tire situation. This is awesome with some recovery boards back here as well. Sick setup. Uh, that would make a lot of sense also to throw on the back of this. I guess it would kind of work for either model. All right, we have charged up definitely really deep. So time to rock and roll. Uh, $21 for 124 kilowatt hours delivered. That's a good deal. Uh, and that's considering we were charging pretty slow. Uh, actually, this guy works for Rivian. Their viewer is super nice. And um, yeah, they're just switching stalls because one wasn't working. Can you uh, hit stop charging for me, please? Thanks. And then we will head out. Okay, here we go. CCS disconnected. That's our session details and we're ready to roll. So I just put in the exact town that we're heading to, which is called Walterboro. We've been there many times on road trips on the East Coast. Uh, and one thing that's interesting is the first charging stop it wants us to get to is in a town called Abilene. And this is the station it wants us to go to, a C rating, which is a EV Connect station, which could just mean anyone has hooked up a charger to the EV Connect network. What I think would make a little bit more sense just for safety of charge would be to head to the Tesla supercharging station, which is right here in Salina. And that's all just a little bit, couple miles ahead of the other one. And you get a Tesla supercharger. We've also told the truck, Hey, we're completely compatible and it has an A rating. So, you know, it's not the end of the world, but oh, maybe I put in uh, electrify America, excuse me, but there is a supercharger somewhere in this region. Uh, let's see, Tesla Supercharger Abilene. Yeah, right down the street from the EV Connect. I'm surprised it would take us in the same town to the EV Connect and not the Tesla with the route planning. Pretty weird, but anyway, we're cruising. Um, those people were super nice with the Compass Yellow. Yeah, it was cool. Nice setup. Nice views for days. Welcome to Abilene, Kansas, and we're arriving at quite high state of charge, but there's really no clear station we could make it to. The thing is, if you look here on the map, uh, there's a big gap and we would not make it over here. So we kind of have to stop here. And the reason we're stopping at such high state of charge is of course we had dinner at the last stop. So we intentionally overcharged. Uh, it's not the not a cannonballing speed, but we were having dinner. We charged to over 90%. Walter had to do his thing, all good. That just means we can spend a little bit less time here at this Tesla supercharger as we head off to probably another Tesla supercharger after this one. But think about this, just about one year ago, maybe a, maybe a year and a half ago, this trip would only be possible using Electrify America charging stations. Already today, we have used ChargePoint, Electrify America, Rivian, and now Tesla. That would not have been possible even a year, year and a half ago. So even though it doesn't feel so rapid, I remember this place. The EV charging infrastructure is improving quite quickly. We're looking back on it even considering all of the challenges of reliable hardware and all these things. So now what we can do is there's plenty of open space. We can find a plug where we don't block anyone. Even if we take two, it should be okay. And we'll basically nose ourselves in here and we'll be able to take this station. We are blocking two right now, but it's not the end of the world. There is not that many Tesla around. Anyway, good to go. 
So here we go, we are plugged in. Now I could have taken this spot here, but then we'd be sticking way out. And again, it's pretty empty here. There's, there was only two other cars here, but we're already charging 60 kilowatts and ramping. Now in warm weather like this, especially with these version three superchargers, we are going to probably overheat the connection here, but we'll see. And it'll just show up a message that says limited by charging station, if so. Anyway, Walter's gonna go for another walk. I think he's having a pretty good road trip. Alyssa, what do you think? I think he's doing pretty decent, aren't you, buddy? Yeah, he seems to be having fun. Yeah. All right. Good yeah. stuff. Let's go. There are three cars here, and everyone has their own dog. <laughs> so dog mode is definitely a feature every EV needs to have because people road trip with their dogs. Well, that didn't take very long. Limited by charging station. I don't know how long it's been up, but we uh, I was just out walking with Walter a little bit. But um, yep, that is just the nature of using Tesla superchargers. And again, the wet rag would have helped in the past. Uh, not only does Tesla actually for the first time in seven years, they said something about not using the wet rag. And of course, we don't want to do anything to cause danger, even though I don't think it does, but it, I'd never recommend it. However, uh, there's now new logic in to protect uh, the temperature uh, sensors, uh, not protect, but to detect, I should say, when they're being fooled and they still limit current. It's fairly warm, the handle, uh, but um, yep, we are at limited charging performance at the moment. Such a shame. Great charging network, built out, very reliable cannot deliver sustained current to vehicles, unfortunately. Well, Walter, you had fun running around. He was going full send. Fast. Yeah, I didn't know this big dog can move that quick. He is quick. Yeah, <laughs> he is fast. Anyway, perfect little dog run back there. So that's a great spot, but uh, I know we're overheating, but I don't think we needed to charge very much since we arrived at pretty high state of charge. So let's go check it out and see how far the next uh, charger is that we should head to. We are charged up to 54% state of charge and we are heading east. So the next big station is this not very good rated EV Connect. So I'm gonna say we're not doing that. Then we have a Electrify America B, been to that one in Topeka. And then we're gonna head, uh, yeah, then you've got an A rated Tesla station or not too far away so let's see what it says we'd get there at uh, eight miles of remaining range uh, it's only 97 miles away so i think that was perfect timing we should just head out and go let's blast before we unplug no. just before we unplug here's some of the stats i don't know what it says what does it say Alyssa? 143 kilowatts glares 47 kilowatt hours delivered for yeah. 17 minutes. And how much? Uh, 17 bucks. Great, let's rock and roll. Dollar a minute. All right. Guys, check this out. This was the EV Connect station that the car was routing us to rather than the Tesla supercharger. This is sick. They're actually replacing gas pumps with EV chargers here in Kansas. Oh. How cool is that? Under canopy, I guess you would. That is really nice. And you didn't want to go? Well, I just wanted to use the superchargers, but this is so cool. Okay, I got to get a picture of this. Oh, Do they nice. have a windshield wiper solution? Yeah, they got a little self start Well, let's just plug in. We, I, we have enough to make it with 14 miles, but let's see how hard this is to activate. I'm going to juice up at this one. See how this goes. So I think I'm going to use the EV Connect app to start, but you can also just pay with a credit card. It doesn't tell me how much it costs, though. So I'll just use the EV Connect app. Anyway, um, this is pretty nice. Got a charge here. This is cool. I think I've seen a photo of this station on uh, X on Twitter. Alyssa's getting the windshield. We did get a rock chip. Oh, yeah, gnarly one. So need a new windshield after this for sure. Patch it on? No, look how much it's already spread. That was from a truck. That was gnarly. It was a big hit. So BTC units, RFID, credit card, 35 cents a kilowatt hour. Nice, cheap. Actually, just to make life easy, I just plugged in, I tapped Apple Pay on this, and it's initiating. That's a great experience. That's exactly what we're looking for here. Under canopy with the gas car, guys. How about that? 
Whoa, why is this so exciting to go back in time to have the fueling experience and a much better amenity than at the supercharger, I would say. This, maybe the truck was right. We should have come here. And we are charging. How quickly will we charge? I don't know, I think. Are these 350 kilowatt stations? There's only one cabinet there, so it might be 150 kilowatts. Why are we stuck at 52 kilowatts? Oh no. Maybe it's got to spin up a few power modules at a time. I'm going to look at the uh, power over there. But yeah, we're only doing 53 kilowatts. That's not great. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's why you go to the supercharger. We'll give it a minute. See what it says. Okay. So here is the power cabinet that we are working with. So we've got a transformer here that's 500 kVA, which is only 500 kilowatts. But that's enough to feed one of these which is 500 amp max output one and two. However, it's only hooked up to 350 amp dispensers. So that doesn't seem to work pretty well. And so let's see, branch circuit, 483 phase. Where, da, 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 da. It doesn't say, yeah, it just says 500 amp max. Unless I'm just glancing at it, but I don't actually know how much power this thing can do but definitely more than 50 kilowatts, I would think. But how cool is this? Juice up under a canopy. This is a really nice install. So weirdly, the station is limited to 50 kilowatts, which is not good at all. So not a great experience, but um, from a charging speed perspective, but I like the idea. It's the thought that counts. That worked out pretty well, actually. So anyway, I think we've tested it out. We are good to go. You're good to go, Alyssa? Yeah, it's really slow. I just want to see if it's the truck that's actually limiting or the charger. And I'm pretty sure it's the charger. If I just come over here to service, service mode. So typically when you get the limited by charger message, it's when it was giving you more and then derates. But if we come in here, yeah, it's only 125 amp max, which is a typical 50 kilowatt charger. So that's very unusual, very weird, especially for this setup. But uh, yeah, I would say no one should come here and charge, but pretty cool that it can do 125 amps. Uh, it needs to do like uh, four times that amount. All right, let's go. So charging has stopped 3.5 kilowatt hours. Cost me $1.22. It needs to be way faster speeds. I like the idea. Just way more power is needed. Holy smokes. Okay, let's rock and roll. If this thing had 300 plus kilowatt charging, like it's intended to, I think. Yeah, it's supposed to be a 350 kilowatt charger, according to the Rivian. Isn't it? Don't know, but you roll up and get 50, that's not a good day. So that stuff would piss me off. But anyway, I, I'm just giving them a pass because they replaced fuel pumps with EV chargers and that's kind of cool. Okay, off we go then. Welcome to Kansas Turnpike and one of my favorite charging stations. It's very similar to a lot of the chargers we visit in Germany where it's in the middle of both highways at a rest stop. It's awesome. This is a private road and so it's a toll road. So this was part of it, I guess. And it's really awesome. We're just pulling off here at 3% state of charge uh, because we actually stopped at that little gas station uh, <laughs> charger and we were able to uh, wash the windshield and top up a little bit. We had enough range to actually skip the previous supercharger we were heading to and come over to this one. And you can see it's perfect. It's right off the highway. It's right here. And actually last time, Alyssa, you and I were at this station, we were stranded here because the grid lost power. Remember that? Yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. I don't know if that had ever happened to me before where we rolled up to the supercharger and it happened just as we were rolling in and it hadn't updated in the car. So the car was like, hey, it's all available. Did uh, someone leave that Model 3 there? Because it's got like a towing sticker on it and it's a rental Model 3. So that, that could have been rental car gone wrong. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, I'm just going to nose this in right over here to 3C. 
not doing the best parking job, but uh, I don't want to block three stalls. Let's just block two stalls. And um, yeah, great location right off the highway. This is going to be a pretty deep charge. We've booked a hotel roughly 200 miles away from here, Alyssa, right? Yep. So another three hours of driving still. Yep. Um, which we still have to charge quite a bit. So I threw it in conserve mode to stretch it here. We were slammed in lowest, but the temperatures have come down at 77 degrees. I'm hoping that means we can get longer uh, duration charging before D rate. So uh, Walter's gonna go for a long walk. I think we're gonna charge up here at least to 50%. I don't know, I'll have to look at the stations, but we're gonna get, we're on the west side of Kansas City. We're gonna cross Kansas City and head into Missouri. So rather than using the plug and charge function, I'm actually pre-activating the station with the Tesla app and then plugging in and having it communicate and start charging. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm actually a Tesla subscriber, believe it or not. Uh, and I'm able to actually get a cheaper kilowatt hour rate, which on a battery this big does make a difference. And it's worth uh, pre-activating in the Tesla app rather than using the benefit of a plug-in charge for a 10, 20, or even $30 savings over a charging session. I'm all for it. By the way, I'm just noticing how nice the fresh rotors look on my Rivian. I just put all new brakes on it. Uh, this truck has not, like I said, had a traditional use case. Lots of off-roading, lots of track time. The brakes were toast. So new front, rear, pads and rotors all around. Most EVs, brakes will last a really long time, uh, but I use this truck pretty damn hard. So yeah, we're already up to 190 kilowatts here. We're gonna keep it, uh, keep it in dog mode for Walter. Oh, we can't quite yet, range is too low. But we're ripping, really curious to see if the cooler temperatures and the no thermal load on the sun will help at all. So Alyssa's going over to see what's up with that rental Model 3. It's just, must be getting the idle fees of the century. I guess it doesn't count when the station's not full, but um, yeah. Is there anyone in it? No, okay. I was just making sure. <laughs> Dang. It just says date 731 yesterday. Okay, so they just abandoned it here. Yeah, not a good parking job either. That's, man, this is why I would never put a Tesla on Turo or any car on Turo as an example. Uh, well, the nice thing is they have a McDonald's here. Not that we really need to eat. We already had dinner, but just a great rest stop right off the highway. There's a Love's station right there. We're already juicing, things are good. And we're just sitting at 200 kilowatts, love to see it. Well, we've got that water tower and the dog and on that side over there is I-70 going westbound. Walter, what's up, dude? Go find mom, go get mom. <laughs> And we've got I-70 heading eastbound just over there. It's so cool to be in the middle charging. This is just so rare in the US. My understanding is there's some weird law regulation with rest stops and highways and I don't know. We gotta do a podcast on it. I, I, to be honest, I feel slightly embarrassed, but I don't fully understand the rules and regulations as to why we don't have more stations like this in the US. But there is a, like a reason why a lot of our highway rest stops don't have charging, which is whatever it is, it's not good. So yeah, still sitting at over 200 kilowatts. Love it. It really hasn't been that long and we are already derating down to 165 kilowatts now. Again, not sure if that's due to battery pack temperature or the charging connection. My guess is the charging connection. Yeah, this is pretty toasty. The adapter is very cool to the touch, but uh, they Rivian and uh, well, what I should say is when you use an adapter to charge a Rivian or a Ford, it seems Tesla doesn't let their connectors get as hot as if it was just plugged into a uh, native NAX connection on a Tesla vehicle. So they seem to be a little bit conservative. Let's just take a look at the data in here because I'm curious because it doesn't say limited by charging station. So let's take a look at the uh, truck data because typically, oh no, it does say limited by charging station. Okay, just popped up. So yeah, 
that's just typical Tesla superchargers. You get a few minutes, 20% roughly gain, just over, and yep, limits. But that's all right. We put in 40 kilowatt hours so far, which is uh, like a fully charged Nissan Leaf from zero to full. <laughs> Crazy to think that. Anyway, yep, we will be here a while anyway. We're not in a huge rush, but we do have 200 more miles to go, and it's already pretty late. We just took Walter running around for a little bit. Let's see how things are going. They are not going well. Why are we not doing well? Let's take a look into the ride app. Hello. Do, 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 do. Walter's jumping in. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Let's go. I don't even have the truck lowered down. Oh, we are thermal limiting due to battery pack temperature. It's either charger or battery. And this case, it's battery. <laughs> We're at 54.6 maximum. And that is as hot as it will allow while charging. Uh, so because the battery pack is limited down to under 200 amps, a real serious limit down to 80 kilowatts, um, we now have almost 450 amps available from the charger because that has cooled down. Sadly, the Rivian used to tell you when it was the limit and everyone was complaining about thermal management that they just turned that off. But they'll blame the charger when it gets hot, but not the truck. And never blame yourself. Always blame charger, ABC. Shout out Bjorn. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, well, we should actually have enough energy to maybe stretch it to the next charger, but this is why I hate road tripping my Rivian. Really hate it because every stop, you're battling the charger or the car or both. So we are going to be staying in Colombia, which is, I think, over here. Yes. And there's a RAND station in Colombia. <coughs> nice Model Y pulling up here. And that means that we need to charge. Okay. What's in the middle? Okay. Tesla Concordia. Let's take a look. So it says we need to stop at EVgo to make it there. Don't want to do that. We would not make it yet. 88 miles at 42%. I think we would make it. Anyway, we probably will charge up just until Walter's done drinking water. And then we'll hit the road. Because I don't want to sit here at 90 kilowatts for too long. All right, Alyssa. So I think we could, on a full charge, easily get 200 miles out of this truck. We have 130-something kilowatt hour battery pack. It should be doable. And so we're at 44%, and we have 88 miles to go to get to that next supercharger. That would indicate a 200-mile range at 100%. And the truck thinks we can just do it by arriving at four miles now. But I say we go. We're not going to sit here and charge at... Well, we're up to 100 kilowatts blazing. Let's, that's crazy. Uh, so I think what we're going to do is unplug, hit the road, off we go to, what is it, Concordia that we're going to? I know Columbia tonight, but what's the next uh, supercharger? Oh, we're not going to Columbia? Is it near Columbia? No, 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 this is, this is Concordia. That's the Tesla supercharger. That's Columbia. So we're going, oh, wow, we're going pretty far then. So we'll probably top up at that RAND station just enough because you never want to rely on having level two charging overnight. Would you mind hitting stop charging, Alyssa? Thank you. And we are ready to hit the road. Let's unplug, conserve mode, dump the suspension like it is, and we'll blast over to the next Tesla supercharger. Kyle seems to be preconditioning while preconditioning. Here, he's, he's got the I adapter in his hand. I can't see that. <laughs> no, but it's there. Yeah, you can see it.
We have arrived with 6% state of charge. Efficiency steadily creeping up as the speed limits are dropping. We've been, you know, basically driving at 80 instead of 85. But uh, still, man, this Rivian is a brick going down the road. So let me get this all hooked up and we'll see how well it charges. We are plugged in and I can hit another windshield wash. It's like the most un-out of spec road trip. We're taking our time. We've got windshield washing situations. Now, one thing I am gonna do that I think may help, we're at 6% state of charge, is actually keep the air conditioning on in the Rivian. It spent the whole time preconditioning over here, but sometimes I've noticed I actually get a better charge when I leave a light amount of AC on in the truck. So we're just gonna basically keep the door cracked, keep the AC running. Once I have enough range to get it into dog mode, I'll hit dog mode and then there's no risk of it shutting off. So we'll see how it goes, but it could be a fun experiment. Damn, well, it literally only took just two minutes. We've only gained 3%. We're already thermal limited by the charging station. That is so annoying. Yeah, it's not even warm. It's slightly warm here, but damn, that is frustrating. Ugh. It is getting late. It's 11.20 p.m. our time, 12.20 a.m. this time here. And uh, Alyssa, we are basically going to head to our hotel. But our hotel is roughly 90 miles away. So what we're going to do is stretch it to the nearest supercharger to the hotel. Charge up enough to stretch it past the hotel to the next DC charger, which is a Pilot Flying J, just in case the level two Tesla wall connectors of which there are only two of them are taken or blocked by ice cars. It's something we always do. So, you know, we always treat level two hotel charging as an amenity. It'll be a great way to top up and save time on the trip, but we never rely on it. Uh, even with real time station status, you don't know if they get blocked by a gas car or not. So always charge up enough just to make it there dead and then anything you can get at level two overnight. Well, hey, it's just a benefit. Okay, well, Alyssa is just about to unplug us here. So I'm going to hit stop charging. We did 50 kilowatt hours. And there we go. Stopped at 39%. It says we'll get to the next station with six miles. That's plenty. So it'll be right there. Quick top up and then off to the hotel. Well, this would have been a perfect place to stay overnight, perhaps, but uh, I don't think we actually were considering any of these. I don't know. Alyssa was doing a lot of hotel searching and it was really busy around here for some reason. Anyway, we booked a Holiday Inn not far from here, uh, but the reason, again, we're stopping in Columbia here to charge them, we'll make the 20 minute or so drive to the hotel is uh, this is actually the last charging station before a big stretch. And because we're heading to a hotel with level two, like I mentioned, we're not sure if we'll actually be able to get a charge at the hotel. So we're gonna charge up just enough here to make it, and then anything extra at the hotel will be good. Uh, we of course could have made it all the way to the hotel, uh, leaving from the previous charger if we had charged up a bit more but uh, it would have taken even longer to charge up for that big stretch after. So it was worth it just to come here right off the highway uh, to this place in Columbia, Missouri. There's also a Rivian Adventure Network charger about five miles uh, behind us. We passed, but again, this was the last charger before the big stretch. So it works out pretty well and we're already doing 200 kilowatts. Alyssa just checked and it's actually only about um, 60 miles or so to the EVgo Pilot Flying J site. 
uh, which is the next charger. So we'll charge up to, I don't know, 35-ish percent, something like that. That'll leave us a little bit of headroom to precondition the car in the morning, to have some phantom drain overnight, which it's getting better on Rivian. The phantom drain's almost non-existent, really. Uh, they've done a great job fixing a lot of that. But um, yeah, we'll just charge up 35%. One last walk for Walter now, get them all settled in for night. That way we can get to the hotel, get checked in, get to bed, because we're both tired. We are pretty much good to go. Walter just finished up his walk. We're charged up to 31%, already limited by charging station. As Soon as Alyssa's doing, doing what she needs to do, we'll head out. The truck shows a three mile arrival, but it's been uh, slightly pessimistic getting better. Um, with the headwinds at the beginning of this trip, it was uh, the opposite. It was like, oh, you'll get there with 10 miles and we'd get there at three. And now when it says three, we'd probably get there at 12. I don't know. Anyway, um, with the little amount of phantom drain and the hope that we can get some level two charging overnight in Kingdom City. We've actually stayed at this Holiday Inn before and uh, it's under a canopy, the level two stations. It's pretty cool, nice spot. So fingers crossed we uh, can actually get some charge, but yeah, we'll be good to go either way. As soon as Alyssa's done, we'll unplug, head to the hotel, be there at just before 2 a.m. Long day. We have arrived and the space is open, but I don't see the light on the charger. Okay, let's take a look. So this Model Y is charging here. This one appears to be dead. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hit a reset on this thing. That doesn't seem to do anything. Occasionally these lights will just go out. So let's hope it's powered, otherwise, that's why you'd never bank on charging. Let me get the adapter, I'll plug this in, but uh, yeah, we'll just rest that there for a moment. Yeah, nice holiday in. And yeah, this Model Y is charging, so nothing we can do about that. Perhaps we can get access to the breaker box if this doesn't work, let's see. Oh, it is working, Alyssa. It's just a dead light on the unit. Good stuff. Okay, that, I've seen that happen on these Gen 2 wall connectors more than more than once. Looks like someone knocked this thing down. It's held together. <laughs> okay, zip ties, baby. Love it. Nice. All is good. How much speed? Yeah, 9.5 kilowatts. Hey, we'll take it. Better than nothing. All right, I'm going to get us checked in. Love it. Oh no, just as I broke open my food, we have derated to 41 kilowatts. Okay guys, let's do a little experiment. Tesla says no more wet rag, but you can see the charger's limited to 300 amps. That's about what we're getting into the battery. Uh, they never said it couldn't rain outside though, did they? <laughs> well, Rivian road trip's going really well. It's not allowing us to use cruise control until it's service, but it was just in service for a whole month. We have a Rivian surge problem. And there we go. Big speeds, 217 kilowatts coming in, 218 being delivered. Let's see how long this lasts. Well, this barbecue place has sushi and salmon and fries. I'm happy. 